My name is Lynn with my partner Steve from the UK. We bought a 300 year old stone farmhouse and olive grove in Abruzzo, Italy that we call Brambletai. Brambletai is situated just outside a small village overlooking the Adriatic Sea and the Maiella National Park. We've taken on the restoration and renovation of Brambletai ourselves to become our future home. We'd love you to come along with us whilst we learn new skills, a new language, live the lifestyle and explore the region with our dog Button. Well good afternoon everybody, another rip-roaring episode at Bramble Tire. Uh, Lynn's sorry she can't be here so uh, Button's taken her place, well done you. So uh, you're going to stay with us, good girl. Good girl. Uh, this week's vlog, uh, as I said last week, is about taking out the stones of that new opening where the Gergers, the Gerders, Gergers, the Gerders went in above. I told you filming makes you say funny things. Um, it's been a tiring week, a lot of stones to remove, probably upwards of seven or eight tons, I would imagine, but most of it's out and I've got to start um, measuring up now to get those, uh, the stones that we got f uh, probably about six weeks ago from the quarry the ones that we're going to use as the framing stone. Uh, I'm going to show you those being cut up. Um, I'm going to measure them first, cut them up. I'll try and get the drawing out so that we're actually, uh, so that you can see what I'm actually working to. And uh, well, the main issue here is how we cut the stone. Obviously, we've only got limited tools on site. We have a diamond cutter, but I've got a funny feeling that's going to be a little bit on the harsh side for the stone to cut. Nothing? Okay. I think Button wants a little snack. There you go. It is a little snack, isn't it? Yeah, lovely girl. There you go. Do you want that one? Here. Anyway, um, yeah, where was I? That would be measuring, um, measuring the stones, starting the cutting operation, and just seeing if I can cut a full length off one of those 1.4 meter length pieces of cut already cut stone. Now, that's going to be one section that we're going to have to roll over and turn and I'm going to show you exactly what I'm trying to do. Uh, it's a bit more difficult trying to um, open a new opening rather than an existing opening because on the existing opening the area where this stone normally goes is already there. On the new opening I've actually got to make it and it's easier to form two pieces of stone, glue them together, bolt them together and you'll see how that process goes on. Uh, down the next week and see if we can do that successfully or unsuccessfully that depends on how it goes really the first thing is the cutting operation so what I want to do is get that cutting operation underway um, before I do uh, it's important if you could subscribe um, it helps the channel grow uh, Button uh, wants the channel to grow she enjoys being on the videos don't you she's not saying a lot at the moment you're not saying a lot at the moment do you enjoy being on the videos yeah enjoy them <laughs> yeah she enjoys being on the videos and um, if you like what you see if you can tick the like box leave any messages I'm sure Lynn will get back to you I'll do my best uh, obviously there's not a lot of time between filming and editing these films or these vlogs uh, in order to get them out um, in good time at the moment we're making one vlog um, every week and um, which is what I committed to in the first place and so it's been about four months now and we've done one vlog every week 16 vlogs at the moment uh, we're enjoying them um, they're a lot of fun but obviously there is a serious connotation to getting the house finished as well so each of these processes are um, I take very seriously I go through with the architect um, any YouTube advice I can take uh, is always good from people. Uh, you never know what somebody else has done that can be helpful to uh, to me, uh, particularly on the building side of things. Um, in order to get the stones cut, um, I prepared some of the land out, right outside the house where I'm going to be working. And uh, that meant getting the digger out and obviously uh, shifting quite a lot of soil. Some of that soil we can use in the veg garden, some will go up on the olive grove. Uh, that's where you saw Lynn last week uh, doing the pruning 
and obviously some of that will go on the driveway so that'll start to level out the driveway we're just leaning down from the front entrance slightly which is what we wanted because I knew that we would have I knew that we would have um, some filling I prefer to filling backwards than try and get it perfectly uh, right first time it's only me on site so uh, everything takes its time um, but that's about it and um, hopefully you'll enjoy this week's vlog uh, it's a bit of an unusual way of starting it um, but I'm not doing any voiceover on removing the stones so I thought what I'd do is uh, get an introduction in uh, nice and early and um, you've had a good time haven't you it's been good isn't it you enjoy it good girl so uh, we may speak at the end of the vlog depending are you going to say anything at the end of the vlog do you want to speak at the end of the vlog um, she's very funny she's very intelligent and smart and, uh, she wants to go so uh, bye for now and we'll see you later So coming into the end of the day here, about six o'clock, still 22 degrees, lovely, just having a cup of tea and probably going to do some uh, clearing up in a minute, uh, lots of stuff coming out, it's quite easy to take this stuff out, uh, as you can see it's quite a big hole there now, um, yes yeah, so I'll probably carry on with this tomorrow. a little, I don't know whether you can see him, a little scorpion is probably trying to sting me, it's coming up to the camera lens and uh, there you go he's quite happy, a little baby scorpion so I'm just going to let him go, he's on the floor See it moving that one. Stone. Speak of stone coming out. So was this um would you call this cement that they did in those days? No, yeah, just a bit of a bit of sand and original lime. Right. We don't know what the exact mixture was. And, uh, I know that you've asked Mario the architect. No, nobody knows him. Three hundred years ago. Right. They may, you know, from the quarry there. I don't know, they might just make all, all ordinary lime with it. Probably that's what they did, I don't know. Mm. But there's some, uh, there is some, a little bit of strength in it. It's not, when it's dry, it's, I mean, it just crumbles off, but it's the... Uh, when it's compact. Yeah, it's the, just the compact nature and the combination of each stone together. That's the edge of the wall. So that wall is, at the moment, is 750. Seven, more or less 750 wide so it's wider at the base I guess most castles not that this is anywhere near a castle obviously um, but most castles wall at the foundation base would be wider uh, than they are at the top so as they gradually get built up they get a little thinner um, there's not a lot of difference so if I go halfway up here uh, so it's gone over a metre and a half, two metres, it's gone to 600, there you go. Uh, that's 600, not that one, 600. See, directly above me, 
we've got the steels all in all in place and they're just sitting there quite comfortably uh, feel quite safe below here uh, these metal pieces they were rebar uh, bodged in for the window it's not my work I'll just cut those off and just leave the ends in that's fine because uh, what's going to happen here is um, I think you can see my hand coming around here obviously these uh, this is the this is the line going down at the moment from the steel above so we've got 400 mil overhang following down that um, sprayed orange line uh, all this has got to come out, all this has got to come out, you can see this is already loose um, and what we'll do is we'll cut this, in fact what I'll do is I'll take this stone out we'll put a smaller stone in here and we'll uh, we'll blend all this together so none of this, you'll not, you'll not see any of this mess but the most important thing to do, once I've got this base out which is what you're looking at there, so that's going to be the half of the door all the way down to the foundation uh, which is the next job here might do that in a minute um, is to start measuring for the stones that we got in uh, on the first program of uh, this entrance opening uh, so we needed to buy the stones from the local quarry and obviously that stone is going to sit uh, somewhere here all the way up all the way up all the way up all the way up to the top and then we'll have a stone going across there we'll have a keystone in the middle which I'll make We'll have another stone going all the way down there and then obviously we'll go all the way down to the bottom there so that's basically going to frame the door uh, like the top entrance so I did the top entrance last year so I'm expecting it to come out something like that you can see that keystone uh, right in the middle there and it's quite difficult to get it all square so what I'll probably do is make a former a wooden former for exactly the whole size I need and that would just sit inside the frame so I can work to a square wooden uh, section I'll show you how I do that so um, it'll become a little bit more obvious I appreciate what I'm saying not everybody's going to get but when you see it perhaps perhaps you get a better idea I'm um, trying not to use too many technical words I'll just try to keep it as easy as and informed as possible. Uh, we took a look at the doors uh, that we're going to be using for this and uh, they're quite interesting. Um, they need a lot of work but to put in a double door set here with the proper framework with all the things we want, double glazing or triple glazing, uh, probably about four and a half thousand euros. Um, that is a that's quite a considerable cost. Um, can't get the glass at the moment um, because of su the supply chain problems in Italy so I might go to Pilkington in the UK and have um, just give them the sizes so they can make up the panels and get them either shipped over here or uh, I can go and pick them up uh, it's a long way but uh, believe you me it's worth it when you see the prices of what's happening in Italy at the moment it's horrible but it's, we've got to get on with it, we can't just delay and not do this, it's part of the structure of the building. All this here, all this side, so this is the, going to be essentially the inside of the house because the door's going to be coming somewhere about here. So that would be about that far inside the outside wall. So all this part here is going to be um, well, Rete, R-E-T-E -E in Italian, and that's uh, that will be a mesh of steel. So it's the kind of thing you reinforce your floor with. So we'll we'll drill in uh, rebar, we'll drill in holes, 20 mil holes, and we'll put in 20 mil rebar, and then we'll chemical that into the side of the building, uh, 800 mil spacings, and then we'll put the mesh. It's a sheet mesh. Imagine the the orange plastic here, but with bigger squares, but made in steel. I haven't got anything. No, I haven't got any to show you. I've got Eclectic next week. But basically, that is going to be offered up to the wall. It'll be tied on with building wire to each of the poles that are chemicaled in. And then we'll, um, we'll render over the top of it. You won't see the mesh at all. And that will give us um, a really solid base, which will tie this side of the inside of the wall to going around the inside of the house. And they'll be connected together as well. It's part of the project, we haven't got a choice. Um, it's to stabilize the walls uh, in case of um, an earthquake. 
Uh, we haven't had one since we've had the property and obviously the property hasn't suffered any damage from any earthquake in the past. We have no records of earthquakes. Uh, one in L'Aquila which is about 200k away. Um, I think there was a shadow here but this building didn't suffer whatsoever. So um, that's testimony to the way the builders put these together. You can see the boulders in there, look, you can see the size of them. And they put them in like teeth and they just sit together with a very small gap in the middle and they'll fit another stone inside here and uh, all those lock together and they build it like a brick wall then just put the um, the sand and lime in. You can see how soft it is, it, we could, you can literally pull this away and obviously the lime mortar I'm putting back in is much, um, is a, what I would call a much better quality. Um, obviously the wall needs to breathe so um, we are using lime. Uh, it's a more expensive material um, but it's pleasurable putting it in. It gives a lovely finish to the wall as you can see here. Uh, all this wall is finished and uh, easy, re relatively easy to work in. So I inject it, in, I inject in the, uh, the lime mortar. I don't use a trowel or a bag um, and it comes up really nicely. Uh, so that's the edge. Um, that's the back of the house or the side of the back of the house rather but that's the back leading edge and uh, it goes in really well and those stones will just get a light clean over uh, we'll do that when the house is finished uh, just before we take the scaffolding down so we can get all over the building and we'll decide what we're going to clean this up with um, I don't know probably either a wire brush or a brush on a machine or I don't know maybe even a light a very very light sandblast obviously without destroying the stonework or the texture uh, anyway that's about it for now um, so we've got to take from there to there out so I'm going to get on with that and I'll show you a little bit more I'll put the camera on on the tripod behind while I'm doing this and I'm going to see if I can get down to uh, the foundation by the end of the day. Okay, so uh, we'll speak later. Alright, so we're just coming to the base of the uh, where the half stone would go. Just trying to get a lever under this. And what I'm going to do is take out all the way down to the base What I've done is I've brought round the stones to where I'm working. So these are the ones we got. Uh, just starting to do a bit of measuring. Um, what I've done at the moment, 
is um, obviously supported it on the bottom but I've put a, a cut line in the first piece of stone just here. So that's full length now, you can see that line goes all the way along. And what I've done that for is I'm going to turn that piece over in a minute and support it underneath. Uh, as you can see my workbench is shorter than the item I'm working on, which is not ideal. But nevertheless it will work because I've got support long enough for that stone to get cut all in one length. Now these are the side stones. These are going to go up the side of the doorway, approximately here. We're not going to measure that yet. Uh, I'm going to see what we're going to be using. Uh, but I think what I'll do is I'll explain it to you a little bit more. So, um, the reason I've put that cut line in, uh, is about an inch deep, is when I reverse it over and I cut from the other side in exactly the same way, and that'll become obvious in a minute, then um, it'll meet that cut line. And what I'm looking for is for this stone here, I need this, this full length. Obviously that's going to be the main part, but I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with that. If I can get that off in one length, the idea is, is, to, is to pick it up carefully and transfer it over to here. And I'm going to put in uh, either uh, all thread, steel all thread, 10 mil, and I'm going to chemical into a hole so you end up with a spigot at various parts along there and then I'll drill a hole in this part offer that over the top recess a hole where I can put um, a nut and washer on clean up this edge resin everything so that will be a two coat resin stick this stone on top of this that will give me my double thickness which which will get me back to where we want to be on the size of stone. Now, if none of that was obvious, it is going to be obvious, so stick with me. This is uh, what I call the interesting part of the job. Uh, obviously we put the girders in, we've opened up the wall, but we've got to understand that I can actually do this with this stone and it's going to work. Because if it doesn't work, we are going back to plan B, which um, I haven't got one. That would be uh, something I don't really want to go to. So, but I've got a feeling this could work. This is going to get a bit messy. I've got my air defenders um, and I've got my uh, breathing mask. So, got the breathing mask there. So that's going to go on. And I've got the air defenders on. Uh, so you can see the air defenders are on. Barn behind me. And. Uh, I'm just going to see if we can cut this. So I'm going to leave the camera running. I won't be able to speak because obviously it's going to be too loud and I've got the breathing apparatus on. But uh, you'll get the idea. I'm going to put the camera a few feet away as well so it doesn't get covered in dust. But anyway, I'll be speaking to you very shortly.
Right, okay, you're back with me. Um, right, I'm going to show you how perpendicular these are, how straight. You can see they fit together perfectly. And I'm no stonemason, I can assure you. This is my first time at this. But that is the profile that I'm looking for. So if you imagine what you'd use in the past is a profile that, where my finger is, would carry on there and go down there. But we've got to fix our stone into an existing wall. That means to get that stone in, you'd have to remove a great deal of the mylar stone from the wall. What I'm talking about is you'd have to remove probably this, this old stone, this, and really get inside that wall. On an existing, where there was this stone and you're repairing it, well, that's a different matter. But when you're doing it for new, this will prevent us, this profile will prevent us, and I think you're probably getting the idea now, that will start to prevent us from knocking out all that stone. So this is a little idea I had when I saw this stone. I thought it would be perfect uh, for the job. You can see that uh, slightly two different colours at the moment, but that's all going to come up the same colour. I'm pretty pleased with that. To bed this into the wall, I'm going to put in some diagonal um, steel posts coming, coming f I'm not sure whether you can see what I'm trying to do here, coming from there in there and those steel posts will then get chemicaled into the wall. Uh, once that chemical goes off you can't remove it. It's better than cement. Um, it goes off in about 20 minutes. Uh, it's a resin type of adhesive and it goes off like rock so once you're sure you've got this in the right position when it's standing on its end obviously uh, the chemical will do its job and uh, keep it attached to the wall. Now this one is the long one. This is 1.4 meters long. So this is the larger of the legs I'm doing, or the columns I should say. This is going to go from say halfway up the wall all the way down to the foundation. And what I propose to do when we do find that hearthstone, that footstone, we'll just cut off. Depending on how thick that hearthstone is, we can just cut that off and slip the hearthstone underneath. It's doing the job in reverse a little, but uh, actually, because I haven't got the half stone, I haven't found one. I've been around looking. We will find one. Um, it's, it will come up. Um, but as, we've, if, it, as we go through the building work, it might take me one or two months to get that. But uh, as soon as I've found it, obviously I'll let you know.